Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch, and today we are benchmarking the Zolo Q1200. It's available for about rupees 14,000 and features a completely new interface. At present, we have its free flip cover on, which comes within the box. Now let's jump into the hardware specifications. You can see it's a Zolo Q1200 running on the MT6582 chipset and at 4.2.2, a 5 inch HD IPS display, 720 by 1280 pixels with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. So you have a quad-core processor clocked at 1.3 GHz, you can see it from right there, and Mali 400 MP2 GPU with OpenGL specification 2.0 support running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. You have 961 MB RAM available out of 1 GB to the system. You have 2 GB of internal storage and 3.98 GB is available as phone storage. This phone has an 8 GB ROM, it is expandable up to 32 gigs. 8 megapixel primary camera with dual LED flash, Sony Exmor R sensor, cable of recording 1080p videos, and a 2 megapixel front facing camera as well. You have a 2000 mAh lithium polymer battery. It's non removable as the phone has a unibody construction. You have an extrometer, a proximity sensor, light sensor, a gesture sensor, orientation, and magnetic field sensor as well, and all of which are working fine. Now let's start with the benchmarks. First we are going to run the Antutu benchmark. We have run the full benchmark here. We have fast forwarded these as well to get to the results quickly. The scores have loaded up. Let's have a look. So we got a score of 16708 which is actually very good for this particular chipset. It's a bit lower than the Zolo Q1010i and the Q2500. Next up we are going to run the Quadrant benchmark. We are running the full benchmark here as well. It's been fast forwarded. Let's submit the score to get a comparison chart going. So we got a score of 5979, which is again a bit lower than both the Q2500 and q 10 i Although all these feature almost similar hardware, 1GB RAM and a quad-core MediaTek MT6582 chipset. Now we are running Nina Mark 2. Let's see. So we got an FPS score of 49.8, again a bit lower than the other phones in the segment. It seems that the ROM has something to do with that. Now we are running Velamo. First, the browser test. It's a new interface. We won't be comparing our previous scores. So we got a score of 2190, which is a good score for this chipset. And you can see it's just above the Galaxy S3. Now we are going to run the metal chapter of Velamo. It will test the processing capability specifically. We got a score of 463. Now again, this is lower than what we would have expected. Nevertheless, these are good scores in themselves. Now we are going to run Linpack single thread test first. We got a score of 86.07. Again, similar to the Q1010i. Now multi-thread test time. So we got a score of 233.93. Again, that's a very good score and higher than some of the phones in the segment, which is visible right here. Now let's have a look at the multi-touch capabilities. I have six fingers, only five are detected. So it's a five-point multi-touch display. The phone performs quite well. We haven't had any issues with lag. The interface is definitely different, but it's quite fluid. There is no lag throughout, and you can also see that it performs quite well. Touch response is also good. The colors look nice on the display. It has good viewing angles. Touch response remains excellent throughout. It might be a good competition to the Q1010i as well as the Moto G. We'll be back with more on the Zolo Q1200. Till then, you can watch its unboxing from right here, as well as the review of the Zolo Q1010i and the Moto G. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and have a great day.